So we're at Economy, a conference that's all about a new way of thinking about solutions for societal and environmental challenges, uh, and we're talking about smarter cities. So what's a new way of thinking that uh, Cisco's bringing to urbanization and smart cities? Yeah, you know, urbanization is a reality, right? I think we kind of all know there's a lot of data that points to how quickly the world is going to urbanize in the next 10, 15 years, and this is going to be a challenge that we will have to face on a global basis. But the perspective that we are bringing from Cisco is uh, in two areas. As we build new cities, and they're expected to be 100 new cities with over a million people um, in the next, uh, by 2025, um, so as that happens, how can we actually start thinking about planning and building these cities in a very different way, using the network as a platform to deliver services in healthcare, education, sports and entertainment from the network as a platform. So that's one uh, set of challenges we have. The other set of challenges is to actually revitalize existing cities like Barcelona, like San Francisco, that are cities, cities that have a lot of history and they have a lot of art. So it's not as simple as saying, okay, we can now start building intelligent um, transportation or new kinds of stadiums. We, we do have to preserve the history that we have in these cities at the same time, make them more conducive to be sustainable in the future. So we are addressing both those opportunities. Padma, uh, urbanizing 700 million people isn't just a technology problem. Uh, what's the right recipe for addressing the challenge overall? You know, I think one thing that's very key here is to have the right set of public private sector partnerships, right? Because if you think about cities and what needs to happen in cities, um, the people governing that city or state or even a country have to have a vision to transform these cities and make them ready for the future. And I think that's very important because this is a long-term change that we have to drive. Um, so we are successful as technology providers in those kinds of environments where the government has that vision and public sector organizations kind of have a mandate to transform that. The other area where I think it's, it becomes a key um, public sector uh, opportunity is to have broadband capability and broadband penetration, both on a mobile broadband as well as fixed internet capability because a lot of the solutions that we can bring become effective if we have that infrastructure to make it effective. For folks who are living in cities already today, can, can you paint a picture of what a smart, connected community might look like in 10 or 20 years from now? Yeah, so you know, I think if you kind of think about fast-forwarding 10 to 20 years, the aspiration we have is to create these cities, um, and I'm going to speak more from a technology perspective. Obviously, hopefully, they'll be built with more sustainable materials and, and the construction piece of it, which will be much more, I think, different than it had been in the past. But from a technology point of view, we can can sit in the comfort of our home and have access to information, you know, tutoring for our children from remote locations for tutors to talk to them. Uh, perhaps if we have seniors at home, they can get care uh, from doctors without actually having to drive themselves or having someone really drive themselves um, for minor, minor cases into a, into a hospital. We can think of um, transportation being much more intelligent where you will get alerts if there is a traffic condition. So perhaps you'll make the decision that day to work from a kiosk or from your home with the capabilities. Uh, you can interact, if you're a sports fan, interact with your favorite team from the comfort of your room without actually going to the stadium. There's, I think, a lot of things that we can do. Um, I mean, not to say that physical connection and face-to-face -face interaction is going to go away. I think that will remain. But think of how much time we waste today stuck in traffic jams where we're not doing anything and the stress that it creates because you're late for something or you missed a flight um, because a flight got delayed and you were supposed to be somewhere, a lot of that unproductive time will go away.